This is the Create Your Own Life show, where we interview people that are world-class performers, from Super Bowl champions to New York Times bestsellers to billionaires. We figure out what makes them tick and unpack it for you to do the same. I'm Jeremy Ryan Slate, and every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, we help you to create your own life. What is up, everybody? Jeremy here. It is Monday, the 22nd of February, 2021, and this is the Create Your Own Life Show. Thank you so much for spending your Monday with me. I hope you guys really enjoyed the episode of Freestyle Friday that I put out for you guys on Friday where I talked about something from Vince Lombardi that really impacted me. Um, you know, I hope it impacted you as well. Um, I just really think we need kind of more of that out there in the world, and I think it's just really important. Um, if you guys are watching this video on YouTube, hit the subscribe button below. If you're listening to the podcast version of this, be sure to hit that subscribe button so you don't miss another new episode. If you're listening on Apple Podcasts or Overcast, or if you're listening, if you're listening on Spotify, it's a follow button, so make sure you hit that follow button. And, uh, you know, help us to make a bigger impact, and I hope we're making an impact in your life. This episode is sponsored by Audible. Um, Audible is offering all of you fine people out there a free month of their service and a free audiobook download. Uh, right now, I'm reading that first season um, about Vince Lombardi's first season in Green Bay. My previous guest, John Eisenberg, if you want to grab that book or any other book for free, courtesy of Audible, just head over to jeremyryanslate.com slash book. That is jeremyryanslate.com slash book. All right, everybody, we have a cool guest in store for you today. We have Ryan Serhant, who is the – or Serhant, who is the uh, – author of a brand new book called Big Money Energy, and he's also one of the stars on the TV show Million Dollar Listing. So we're going to take a look at how to think about money the right way. We're going to th take a look at how to show up big time, how to outcreate a pandemic, and how to use certain strategies that are always going to keep you ahead of the curve and ahead of everybody else so that you can go big time. So you guys are absolutely going to love this episode. All right, without further ado, let's get into this Free, this uh, this episode and this interview with uh, Ryan Serhant. Hey, what is up, everybody? Jeremy here, and as always, I'm bringing you guys some incredible people that are doing really big things. Today, our guest is one of the top real estate brokers on the planet, best-selling author, and star of the Bravo series, Million Dollar Listing. Welcome to the Create Your Own Life show, Ryan Serhant. How are you? Thanks for having me. Absolutely, Ryan. I'm really stoked to get a chance to chat with you today because, you know, like I, I love talking to doing people doing things on such a big level. And I, the thing I just wanted to start with before we dive into everything is, you know, how did Million Dollar Listing, if at all, change your life? Um, it completely changed my life. <laughs> I, um, you know, I, I was a regular real estate agent in New York City prior to and was just uh, uh, renting apartments and selling a few and then I went to an open casting call for that show with a lot of other agents um, in New York City and Times Square actually and somehow they they cast me um, and I made it through that first season and the show aired and it was uh, it was a big megaphone for me right the phone yeah. didn't start ringing uh, left and right but it was a reason for me to pick up the phone and let yeah. people know like hey this is what I do that's me and slowly but surely things steamroll you know they take time but it was uh, it was publicity that I would never be able to afford. And, and I guess it's interesting from that viewpoint. Like, I, has that changed your viewpoint on publicity, or like, you know, like getting it or getting out there? Or how how has that affected your viewpoint on like getting seen and heard? Um, three things that are really important to me, and uh, um, in my in my new book, Big Money Energy, I talk about it a lot. Um, uh, successful people know how to be seen, heard, and remembered. Right. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, for whatever that reason might be, it could be your appearance, it could be your knowledge, it could be the way you communicate, all three or something else. Um, you know, million dollar listing is, is PR to millions and millions and millions and millions of people in an entertaining vehicle that I could not reproduce on my own to that scale. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, mm -hmm. uh, because it airs in almost every other country. Like that's, yeah. that's huge. It's on TV. It's in the background. Uh, I read a book when I first got into the business called the fall of advertising and the rise of PR. Mm -hmm. It's a really, really important book for me. 
and it really solidified the value of things like TV, like like working with publicists, like talking to reporters, because people trust editorial, they trust um, PR more than they trust advertising, right? Right. Now, even if the editorial is advertising, they just happen to trust it more. It's that no like and trust factor, I think. Like, right? People have to know you, they have to trust you, and they have to be able to like really like you and get you before they can ever do business with you. And I think a lot of people just don't have that understanding, and that's why a lot of times they play a small game because uh-huh. they don't realize how big you have to look and appear. Yep. Yep. I would say, so, I mean, people in my line of work, you know, because we're, we're in sales, people hate being sold, but they love shopping with friends. <laughs> you know? So, um, so how can I find more and more friends every single day that I can yeah. work with? Well, Ryan, we're, we're talking about your new book, Big Money Energy, today, and, and one of the things that I wanted to kind of start with on that on that idea is, I guess, like, how do you think about money? And, and here's what I mean by that. Like, my dad's super blue collar, like, didn't go to college, so, like, to him, $100,000 was a lot of money. Yeah. And it wasn't until, like, I started my own business and, you know, doing a lot of different things that I, I look at that now as that's very little money. So, I, I guess when you think of the idea of money, what does that look like for you? Listen, I distinctly remember having to work from when I was seven. Mm. Um, my parents had us work, you know, in the yard, you know, yard work, chores, you know, we had little mini jobs. Um, but it wasn't just like clean up your room. Like they made us work and they would mm-hmm. pay us, um, you know, a dollar an hour, stuff like that. As I got into high school, I, I, they forced us to have real jobs. I worked for a construction company. I got eight bucks and 50 cents an hour. Um, uh, kind of at the top peak there of what I was getting paid in high school and then a little bit more through college but I was just kind of worked construction and then mm-hmm. I remember having those savings and going to New York City in 2006 um, uh, I could have just stayed home like my parents have nice houses could have stayed there um, uh, but I didn't so I went to New York uh, and slowly ran out of savings and then didn't have any money and I didn't want to go home because that to me would have felt like failure so I made the choice just to figure it out. And I distinctly remember what it was like to be in New York City without money. And, wow. um, uh, uh, you know, again, there was always a net if I needed it, but I chose not to have it. Mm-hmm. Um, and so the value of the dollar is very important to me, right? The length of the dollar, what it can do for you, um, and the type of freedoms that it can buy you, right? The freedom of choice, mm-hmm. the freedom to breathe. Um, but. I do remember what it was like to be in New York City with very little money, and I promised myself that I would never, ever, 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 ever go back to that place ever again. And a big part of of finding self-confidence, a big part of big money energy is understanding what you want Mm -hmm. and creating a plan to go and get it. And, And really, really believing in the phrase, why not me? Like a hundred thousand uh, dollars for a very long time in my life seemed like a significant, significant amount of money, right? Yeah. Until it wasn't, because I saw other people who made more. So why not me? And I understand, like I, I'm not going to go steal it. I have to work for it. But why <laughs> not me? And what what line of work can I get into where um, I can lead the life that I want to lead? And so uh, money uh, affords me the opportunities to do the things I want to do, like building the real estate business that I have in New York, right? We, we mm-hmm. own and operate our own real estate firm in New York. It's not free, um, it costs money, we have payroll, overhead, um, and uh, uh, but it allows me to grow and allows me to scale. Um, so it's a tool, right? It's a tool that's transferred between hands. That's really how I think about it. And, and you actually wrote this book, you know, during the pandemic, during when a lot of people were quarantining. And, and I, I, I guess I'm curious, like, you know, why now? Why, why was this the right time to approach that? Yeah, um, I, I wrote it during quarantine, in part because I had time all of a sudden. I didn't have to go to <laughs> right? It was illegal. Uh, and I, I didn't have to go to dinner events or all that stuff. Like, you know, I was quarantined in New Hampshire. Um, uh, it's not a bad place to be quarantined. Yeah, except in the winter, dude, New Hampshire is like, yes, yeah, it's, it's also nothing else to do. And it's not like you can, I, I'm in northern New Jersey. We got like 30 inches of snow in the last seven days. So like, I I, yeah. I, I get it from that viewpoint. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Is it snowing there today? It snowed this morning. We got another seven inches this morning. Ah, so that's why. Got it. <laughs> got it. My team now is well aware. Um, uh, yeah. So, uh, so 
I said, I was talking to a lot of people um, mm -hmm. uh, at that time, you know, through Instagram Live, through Zoom, through everything. And so many people were scared and so many people were nervous. Uh, as they should have been, right? It was a scary time in March and April of 2020. Mm -hmm. Stock market sold off 10,000 points. People were losing their jobs left and right. Unemployment was in the millions and millions every single week, right? It was a tough time and people were connecting their self-worth to their income. Mm -hmm. And I remember what that was like. And as scared as I was going into quarantine, uh, because every deal we had on the table died, right? Mm -hmm. um, and it's not like people decided to go buy apartments, right? They left and decided to buy houses outside. Right. Before. You know, my market disappeared overnight. So really, really scary. right. Because I know my, my parents just sold their house and they got almost double what it was worth um, because of people like leaving the city. It's crazy. <laughs> yeah, Dude, it's crazy. The numbers are just bonkers. Yeah. Anyway, that's a whole different podcast. Um, <laughs> I, but it's talking to people and I realized, wait a minute, like, I remember feeling this way. Because my first day in the real estate business was when Lehman Brothers filed for bankruptcy that kicked off the Great Recession. <clears throat> I mm. remember not being successful. I remember not having self-confidence. I remember looking at the sidewalk as I was walking around um, because I was nervous to make eye contact with people. And I knew that that wasn't the way to get ahead and to be productive. Um, and I knew how I fixed that in 2009 mm. and 2010. And so I started sharing the ideas that I had about how to create energy and how to unlock energy within you even when times are absolutely terrible and when you don't think you want to get out of bed and you don't think that success is for you when you just feel like maybe you know life isn't good enough um you have an energy that is in your stomach mm -hmm. and you can release it and you can control it and if you can control that energy you can control your life and that's what big money energy is about. And I started helping people. And then at the same time, I was taking notes and writing things down. And then the book kind of came out of me in like two months. <laughs> so that's, I guess from that's, that, that's why I wrote it then. And that's, that's why it's exciting to have it out now in the beginning of 2021. From that viewpoint, and like, how do you define big money energy? Like, what does that look like to you? Big money energy is a unique set of qualities that every successful person has, right? We all know what it is. When that person walks in the room, they own the room. And you just look at that person and you say, wow, like, what does that person do? You know, they might not even do anything. They just look like they own the room. Okay. Um, uh, and it is completely something that we can all have. Right? Mm -hmm. Big money energy is about knowing what you want and going and getting it. Um, it's about taking back control of your life by controlling your energy so that you can lead the biggest, most fullest life that you possibly want to against all odds. One of the things that you discuss in the book, Ryan, which, which honestly for me was, was really impactful because I think it's one of the, the, the most important things you can do is, is the idea of like, you know, doing an audit on your life, like, yeah. you know, looking at the things that are bullshit money wasting, you know, money and time wasters and, yes. you know, the, 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 I'm hot shit people out of your life. So I guess like, what does that look like? And what does that process look like for you? Um, the most important thing that we have all day long is time. Yeah. Okay. Yes, you have health. Yes, you have family. But what can you actually con control? Okay. You can control your family, sort of, but they're their own people. But you can control your time, right? We're all given mm -hmm. the same 24 hours. Now, my 24 hours might not be the same as you. Maybe you, you know, have, you know, obligations and things that you got to do that, that I don't have to do. So you actually have less hours, you know. But at the end of the day, we're all basically left with a thousand minutes okay? mm -hmm. a thousand minutes to do whatever you want to be productive um, maybe you have less maybe you have more okay but think about it as a thousand minutes and we follow what we call the thousand minute rule where every day you wake up as the ceo of your own bank of time and you have those thousand minutes so do not waste them so if you're with somebody who has bullshit money energy that person is going to become a time vampire and they're going to start wasting your minutes and if they waste mm -hmm. 10 of those minutes, you're not going to throw away $990 because someone stole 10 bucks from you. Right? And, and those type of people too, like once you give them those 10 minutes, they want more minutes, man. Like they, yeah. they absolutely latch on. So there's a lot of different things that you can do for those types of people that I go through in the book. Um, uh, uh, but when it all comes down to it, it's about taking the high road, right? You take that mm -hmm. high road, um, you give those people what they need to feel like they won, and then you're the one who laughs all the way to the bank. 
You share some like pretty specific stories in the book, um, which I found very impactful. And I guess one of the the ones that you know w- was really surprising to me is you lost seventy two million dollars in in a single day. Number one, like how does that happen? And number two, how do you come back from something like that? Ah, uh, it wasn't. It was seventy two million dollars in deals. Um, deals, okay. Seventy two million dollars I... in cash. Uh, that would have been crazy <laughs> and terrible. Um, it was we had seventy two million dollars in deals. Uh, that all died in one day. Um, it was mm. a Monday. It was the day uh, Trump had taken office and he was fighting with China over the tariffs, if you remember a couple of years ago. And the stock yeah. market sold off just about a thousand points, which now that doesn't sound so bad, right? Mm-hmm. Pre COVID, that was a lot. Um, <laughs> and people reacted. Everyone said at the same time, this is it. Stock market's over. Everything's falling apart. I just lost my down pay. Everything's done. You know, people who buy and sell real estate in New York are nervous Nancy's. Like mm-hmm. they are, they lose their mind. They will negotiate the price of a banana, uh, but they will be the greediest person ever on the other side. So it's, so it's tricky. So we lost all of those deals, but I knew that as long as I focused on future me, the focus on the future, that everything's going to be okay. Right, Mm -hmm. because time heals all wounds. So one thing that I learned how to do to build up that kind of muscle memory for pain is to go into your calendar and write something down in 30 days. That sucks. So like if you lose those $72 million worth of deals today, go in your calendar uh, 30 days out from today and make a note in your calendar, right? 8 a.m., how does it feel now that time has gone by about those $72 million in deals? You will eventually get to that day and it's not going to feel as bad as it does today. Okay? Mm-hmm. Do that with every deal that's lost. Do that with every bad thing that happens. And slowly but surely, you're going to teach your mind to understand that, oh, before I know it, I'm going to get to 30 days out and everything's going to be okay because things will have happened. Life goes on. New good things happen and it's all okay. Uh, and so you're not going to experience that loss nearly as much. And so you're going to yeah. build up that kind of defensive wall against it. I, I think also like, you know, kind of just putting that out there in the physical universe is a big deal as well. Cause I know for myself, like there'll be times when you get a day where you're overwhelmed, right? Like things aren't going so well yeah. and I'll, I'll t- actually make a list of all those things that are bugging me at that time. And just by getting rid of them, you actually feel a little bit better. Um, and you can kind of see where you're at as well. Like just the, the act of putting it out there, I think is a really big deal. Yeah, for sure. So Ryan, like, COVID has changed a lot of businesses. Like it's really affected businesses. It's also really affected the real estate industry. Like how has that affected your industry and how have you um, pivoted or become proactive because of that? Uh, I'm fortunate in that a couple years before COVID, I saw that real estate was becoming more and more digital, but more and more uh, sold through video. Mm -hmm. Okay, And so I didn't want to be the person who said, like, well, the internet's not going to change anything in 1994. And then where's that guy? Right. <laughs> so uh, we quickly created a YouTube channel and I built a media team to do property tours, virtual tours, and vlogs for myself and then all of my agents years mm-hmm. ago. Um, uh, and we quickly built a pretty big following from it. And then COVID happens. Okay. Everyone else tries to pivot. We got to get videos. We got to do this. We can't show. What are we going to do? And we're sitting there saying, oh, huh. good thing we got all this content and all these videos. <laughs> we're pretty good, right? We're ready to go. We have an entire team for it. Um, and it's only made us stronger. So COVID in the real estate market certainly made things in New York difficult, but our clients are, are global. Like mm-hmm. the biggest deals we're doing now aren't even in New York, right? They're in Florida. In New York, we're selling deals because you can get incredible discounts. The rest of the country and internationally, you can buy you know whatever you want. Um, yeah. There's an amazing flight to quality for residential real estate right now. Uh, that is great for any real estate agents anywhere in the world. Like they're just having, you know, if they didn't have the best year of their life last year, they're gonna have the best year of their life this year. Um, but I started my firm in September in New York as a total lunatic because I was the only one starting a residential real estate <laughs> brokerage in the middle of a pandemic in New York. So I dressed up like a superhero and I ran around the city, hung outside a helicopter and was like, Hey, I'm here to save you. Um, and we've been creating content, you know, ever since, uh, it's been really, really beneficial. It's been amazing to get business because we, 
we really are the option now. Like mm-hmm. you're going to hire a traditional brokerage, or you're going to hire us. You know, it's interesting too, because I've heard you talk about YouTube in another light as well. Like, you know, TV has been a very big part of your life and being in the media has been a big part of your life. But with you've also mentioned that with YouTube, it's the speed of getting it out there as well. Like if you film a TV show, you may have to wait six months to a year to come out. Right, like YouTube, dude. it can be out very quickly. Yeah, we're filming. We are still filming now. Million Dollar Listing Season 9, okay? Which we started filming in the middle of 2019. Mm-hmm. Okay, we're going to end up filming that season for two years wow insane like a regular tv show films an entire season in two to three months Mm -hmm. but due to how long deals take to close and then covid happened and we got shut down in february of last year and then we got we started back up in august and then we got shut down again and then we just picked back up like it's a whole thing like it's you know deals that i did on that show that would have been great to air in the middle of 2020 now are old news uh, mm-hmm. they'll still be entertaining to watch. It's gonna be wild to watch actually, cause it's like a pre COVID world. And then all of a sudden it'll cut to black. Um, uh, but YouTube, you know, we're putting a townhouse on the market for $19 million on the Upper East side, uh, right now, actually, my team is putting together right now. We made the video a couple days ago. That'll go live on YouTube tomorrow. No pause. Like we literally move as fast as we can and we're still not fast enough. Um, and with that YouTube audience, we can target people. People can screenshot it. People can share it on their phones. The amount of people that can touch our content on YouTube and Instagram is far greater than what people can do with a screen that's hung up on their wall. Mm -hmm. Um, And that's what makes it so beneficial to us. It's it's interesting you mentioned that too because like I know one of the one of my favorite like like uh, you know home building or real estate type shows is called Grand Designs. It's a it's a UK show, but like they film a lot of these things over like the process of like three years. Cause like oh here we are in month six month whatever, and I don't think people take that into consideration of like what actually goes into this stuff. It's like a, it's like a really big deal. Um, yeah, it's a well, shit ton of time. We got some really great listener questions for you, Ryan, because I know we are running a little low on time, and I do want to make sure we respect your time. Let's do it. Um, but John Wilcher, who is a realtor in Sarasota, he actually does your online program, and he wanted right. to ask you about going from good to great, meaning how, meaning how do you keep on going when things are going so well, but you want to keep that fire going higher than it currently is? Um, you get comfortable with being uncomfortable, mm-hmm. right? Like I have always, everything new that I've done has always been from saying yes to something that I was completely unsure of, Mm -hmm. right? So like he is in our online sales course. Like I I didn't know if I could make an online training program or any kind of training program. Like who's gonna listen to me? Yeah, I sell real estate, but like there's professional coaches out there. You really wanna listen to me? Um, but then I saw what everyone else was putting out there. I was like, you know what? I think we can actually do this better and be way more helpful because I actually do do this. Uh, mm-hmm. And we put it out there and we're like, what's going to happen? And in a year, we're over 6,000 members in 108 countries. And it's like, whoa. So growing, right? From a place that we were completely uncomfortable with. Same thing with the books. Like my first book, it's like, dude, no one's going to buy a book for me. Like, why, why would I do this? But the book and the course also both turn back and create deals, right? YouTube, tons of work. Tons of time. You can do it on your own, just with your phone. Film yourself. Like Casey Neistat, just hold a freaking camera. Right? Everyone's like, oh, I gotta be, I got a crew. I need a crew. No, you don't need no crew. Just go do it and stop complaining. Um, uh, And everything is turned into other deals. Everything is turned into other clients because the number one job for any salesperson is to generate leads. I don't care what Mm -hmm. you say. Your only job, meet new people, prospect, think about the future. That's the goal. That's it. Every day. Anything else. It's just work. Okay? Yeah. Your job is to generate business. Um, and so uh, I, yeah, I've always just pushed myself in being more uncomfortable. Um, you know, like we went into Brooklyn, right? Brooklyn seems close to anyone who's not in New York. It's like over the bridge, but it's 10 miles. It's like 10,000 miles away, um, uh, b- given how compact Manhattan is. Like you have brokers in New York City. Like they don't leave Tribeca. Like why would mm-hmm. you need to? Right? There's hundred, there's billions of dollars worth of real estate to sell on four blocks in Tribeca. Why would you ever need to go to Brooklyn? It's a totally different market. But we had an opportunity to go there, so I said, okay, sure, let's go. Open up an office, figured it out. Right? Like Miami, we just we sold a hundred, we sold a thirty-three million dollar listing uh, in Miami in December. 
I don't do business in Miami. But I had a client who said, do you do Florida? And I said, fuck yes, I do. <laughs> right? Let's figure it out. Let's go. Right? Because it's about trust. It's about confidence. Um, uh, get comfortable with being uncomfortable. Hire people. Get nervous. You know the best way to grow? Build a team that you don't know what to do with. Mm -hmm. And have them force you to be better. Have them force you to go and generate more leads so that you can feed them so they're hungry. Like that's a big thing that my team did for me. I was at 65 mm -hmm. people at one time. And we just did so much business because I was so stressed out most of the time. I'm like, man, I gotta, these guys got to have listings. They got to work. And they're going to do their own business. And then we just, by default, you just you, you do more business. It's just how it works. Absolutely. Well, we have Dr. Bobby Conneru is a, is doc, a doctor out in Iowa. And he's actually been working uh, on the front lines in, in COVID and helping a lot of people. Nice, and he Bobby. wanted... It, and he wanted to know, you know, because you're always dressed really well, how important is it to look right? And I guess, how do we cultivate that, you know, in our business lives? How important is it to look right? To look right in your business life. Yeah. There's two levels of, of thought here. Um, uh, you know, and I, I think that I like to combine them, meaning that if you want to be successful, you need to present an image of success. Now that doesn't mean you dress like Kanye mm -hmm. because Kanye has a billion dollars and you don't. Okay? <laughs> That's true. So like get over it. All right. Don't dress like, don't, like you, you want to dress as an image of success and you want to dress as in a way that is respectful to the people that you are hopeful will make your life better. Mm -hmm. So if you're in, you know, so th those are your clients. Right, those are your patients. You want to dress well for your patients, and you also want to be comfortable for them so that they're not stressed out. Um, uh, you know, seeing you're not going to show up in a tuxedo every day, like that's really really nice, but that will stress people out because it's going to put them on edge. Mm -hmm. um, you need to wear clothes that are ironed, that are cleaned, that fit well, and you have to have what I like to call your confidence costume, which is that kind of power outfit that you have. It's either that suit or those pants, whatever that outfit is that you just know. When I wear this, people look. When I wear this, I feel good. I look in the mirror and there's no one that can stop me when I wear this outfit. And you can say that's materialistic or no, just be authentic, but you are being authentic. You're being authentically you on your absolute best day. And that's totally okay. Um, mm -hmm. Own it, right? Just own it, own it, own it. Um, but appearance is important. Unfortunately, your first impression is your last impression if you're not careful. Absolutely. Well, once again, the book is Big Money Energy. Um, our guest today is the author, Ryan Serhant. Ryan, where can we find the book? Where can we find out more about you, man? You find the book anywhere books are sold or audiobooks or ebooks. Um, you can go to bigmoneyenergy.com, and I'm available everywhere at Ryan Serhant. And thank you so much for having me. Absolutely, Ryan. Thank you so much for being on the show today. Awesome. You guys are the best.